Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the News at 6 where we get you the day's top developing stories. I'm Tracy Shilshi and here are the headlines. Eight civilians, including 22-year-old woman killed in Pakistani shelling along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. Two Pakistani soldiers also killed in retaliatory fire by Indian troops. Centre asks Mehbooba Mufti government to make efforts to reopen schools in Kashmir Valley. Home Ministry seeks notification to conduct board examinations as per schedule from the 15th of November. A day after the encounter, family members of the eight dead Simi activists demand a CBI probe. Eyewitness claims Madhya Pradesh police alerted him about the jailbreak. And Iraqi forces start assault on Mosul city for the first time. Backed by coalition airstrikes, troops liberate the town of Bazwaya as they push closer to the center of the city. Top story this evening, at least eight civilians were reported killed and 22 injured in fresh ceasefire violations by Pakistan on Tuesday. The violations were reported from Noshera, Rajori and Samba sectors. Indian forces are reported to have destroyed 14 Pakistani posts in ferocious retaliatory fire. Here are more details. Eight civilians, including a 22-year-old woman, were killed on Tuesday in Pakistani shelling along the line of control in Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistani rangers targeted now Shera, Rajauri and Samba sectors, as well as forward posts and civilian areas in the Ramgarh sector. Two Pakistani soldiers were killed in the retaliatory fire by Indian troops in Rajauri and Mendhar sectors. एक सैनिक के साथ सैनिक के साथ होती है जब आप उसमें कुछ हासिल नहीं कर पाते हैं तो एक दूसरा ये तरीका अपनाया जाता है कि सिविलियन एरिया को टारगेट किया जाए तो फायरिंग शुरू हुई है उनको मुंह तोड़ जवाब दिया जा रहा है एक एक मौका देने के बाद और जब देखा जा रहा है कि ये अपनी हरकत से बाज नहीं आ रहे तो उनको हम बहुत कड़ा और मुंह तोड़ जवाब दे रहे हैं एट सिविलियंस हु सस्टेन हैवी इंजरीज वर हॉस्पिटलाइज्ड Three infiltration bits by heavily armed terrorists were also foiled in the past 36 hours in Hiranagar sector. An encounter between security forces and terrorists is still underway in Ajar village in Bandipura. According to reports, the village was cordoned off for three suspected Lashkar terrorists holed up in the village. हॉस्पिटल एडमिट किए पाकिस्तान कल और आज सुबह से ही हैवी शेलिंग कर रहा है और हैवी मोटार शेलिंग यहां पे हो रही है और बुलेट्स तक लोगों के घरों तक आई हैं और लोगों का घर से बाहर निकला भी बहुत मजबूर हो गया है Director General of Jammu and Kashmir Police K. Rajendra Kumar visited the border areas of Jammu and Kashmir and urged security agencies to remain extra vigilant on the border. Close to 70 ceasefire violations have taken place in a month after India conducted surgical strikes on terror launch pads in Pakistan occupied Kashmir. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Meanwhile, Jammu and Kashmir Governor met Home Minister Rajnath Singh today to discuss the issue of re reopening schools in the unrest hit valley. In an effort to restore normalcy in the valley, the centre has urged the state government to ensure reopening of the schools at the earliest, which of course have remained closed still due to the violence and strike called by separatists since July. It's been nearly 120 days since schools have been shut. However, at the moment what you're learning is that the Home Ministry does want the board examinations to go on as per planned, of course, the first of which is on the 15th of November onwards. Uh, just a few days back, if you remember, there were, of course, burning of schools that were reported. In fact, uh, reports were saying that at least over 20 schools have been reported in, sep uh, in separate uh, incidents uh, uh, through the valley. Um, and, of course, parents of the children came out in protest as well against separatists saying that their children, of course, the separatist children, of course, were studying abroad, some of them studying in other parts of the country, hence their education was not suffering, but their, uh, the parents, of course, their children, uh, the regular common man, of course, is suffering. And like we pointed out, of course, uh, the Mehbooba Mufti government has been asked to open up the schools as quickly as possible. Let's get you more details on that front. The centre on Tuesday asked the Mehbooba Mufti government to make efforts to reopen schools closed for over three months due to unrest in the valley. 
The Home Ministry also directed the state government to notify over 500 schools to conduct board examinations from November 15th as per schedule. अपने बच्चों को उन्होंने दिल्ली बंगलौर और बड़े बड़े शहरों में रखा और गरीब के बच्चे को पत्थरबाज बनाया अपने बच्चों को देश और विदेश के सर्वश्रेष्ठ शिक्षा संस्थानों में तालीम के लिए भेजा और गरीब के बच्चे के लिए जो सरकारी स्कूल था उसको जलाने की प्रक्रिया में सहयोग दिया समर्थन दिया एक बार भी उसकी निंदा नहीं की वो स्वयं बेनकाब हो गए हैं On Monday, the Jammu and Kashmir High Court directed police and the civil administration to ensure full protection of educational institutions. It also took suo moto cognizance of reports that 26 schools were burnt down. The court listed the case for hearing on November 7th. In the latest attack, a government school was set on fire in Anantnag district on Sunday by unidentified persons. Educational institutions in the valley are closed since July 9th after clashes broke out following the killing of terrorist Burhan Wani. Meanwhile, normal life remained affected due to the ongoing unrest that entered the 116th day on Tuesday. Security has been tightened amid rampant exchange of fire across the border between India and Pakistan. Bureau report Rajya Sabha TV. And now to the latest on the Simi under trials encounter in Madhya Pradesh, responding to opposition as well as the media's questions on the nature of the encounter. Minister of State for Home Kiran Rijiju said that it wasn't right to question the police on the incident. The probe, of course, will be handled by the Madhya Pradesh CID, but the families of the dead men are seeking a CBI probe. Here's more. A day after the eight semi activists were killed in an alleged police encounter in Bhopal, their family members are demanding a CBI probe into the incident, calling the killing cold blooded murders. The families will approach the Madhya Pradesh High Court for an inquiry. An eyewitness has meanwhile claimed that he was alerted by the Madhya Pradesh police in the morning about the jail break. हम पीछे डेढ़ किलोमीटर करते करते यहाँ तक लाए इनको। इनके हाथों में सफेद क्या में वो लाठी थी, कपड़े टंगे थे पीठ पे। पुलिस आ गई तो 25 तीस मिनट। कितने बजे की तकरीब है? सावन नौ बजे, आठ बजे का किस्सा है। हाँ गाड़ी नहीं देखी थी वो तो हम फिर Accusing opposition parties of playing politics over the killing of men, Chief Minister Shivrat Singh Chauhan described the dead men as dreaded terrorists. He also announced a 10 lakh rupees compensation to the family of the head constable who was killed. Responding to the controversy, Union Minister Kiran Rijuju said the police or forces should not be questioned merely on the basis of a video clip. First of all, we should stop this habit of raising doubts and questioning the authorities and the police. This is not a good culture. What we are observing in India is that people have developed this habit of raising unnecessary doubts and questions. Facts will come out. Meanwhile, it was reported that the National Investigation Agency will inquire into the security lapses on the part of the jail authorities. The eight semi-activists were killed in an alleged encounter with police on the outskirts of Bhopal on Monday morning after they allegedly escaped from the high security central jail. The police disclosed that the under trials killed a head constable using sharpened steel plates and spoons. A security guard also suffered serious injuries. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. Like we said, opposition parties have questioned the encounter. Several parties also demanding a judicial investigation into the encounter. While Congress General Secretary Digvijay Singh has said that it was he was in fact curious how only the Simi men escaped prison and were killed. कहीं ना कहीं गड़बड़ है और गड़बड़ जो अगर है तो जांच होनी चाहिए. अब वो कह रहे हैं कि पुलिस की जांच पुलिस ही करेगी. एनआईए करे ठीक बात है. लेकिन एनआईए की एनआईए जांच एनकाउंटर की करे जेल से कैसे भागी इसकी जांच वो क्यों करेगी एनआईए उसकी जांच तो जुडिशियल इंक्वायरी होना चाहिए दिस अपीयर्स टू बी वेरी मिस्टीरियस हाउ कुड दे एस्केप फर्स्ट 
how could they get firearms if at all there was an encounter and uh, they fired at police how could they get uh, firearms uh, all these questions need to be answered and above all how the videos could be made and uh, it is not one video इसकी जांच होनी चाहिए कि फेक इनकाउंटर है कि जेन्युइन इनकाउंटर है इसमें संदेह है सीरियस क्वेश्चंस नीड्स टू बी आंसर्ड नाउ देयर मस्ट बी वी बिलीव आवर पार्टी द सीपीआईएम फील्स दैट देयर मस्ट बी अ टाइम बाउंड जुडिशियल इनक्वायरी इनटू द किलिंग्स बिकॉज़ देयर आर सम डिस्टर्बिंग इनकंसिस्टेंसीज इन द वर्शंस गिवन बाय द स्टेट गवर्नमेंट द पुलिस एंड द वेरियस फॉर्म्स ऑफ एडमिनिस्ट्रेशन कई सवाल खड़े हुए हैं आईजी प्रिजन का बयान ये है कि इन लोगों के एक्सचेंज ऑफ फायर की वजह से हमने उनको मार डाला क्योंकि उन्होंने हम पर हमला किया पुलिस वालों पर और पुलिस वालों ने उन पर और एनकाउंटर के दौर, दौरान ये आठों की मौत हो गई जबकि गृह मंत्री मध्य प्रदेश के कहते हैं कि उनके पास हथियार नहीं थे अब सवाल ये पैदा होता है कि अगर ये लोग जेल से भागे हैं तो दस सवाल खड़े होते हैं पहला तो ये कि इन्होंने किसी एक गार्ड को मारा तो क्या जेल में एक ही गार्ड था Well, these questions, of course, remain answers. Of course, we're looking out for. Meanwhile, Prime Minister Narendra Modi on Tuesday pitched for the empowerment for the poor in Chhattisgarh, saying that skilled youth can pull themselves out of poverty and help fuel the engine of growth. Modi, who is on a visit to Chhattisgarh to inaugurate the state's 16th Foundation Day, unveiled the statue of Jansang ideologue Din Dayal Upadhyay. Modi said that states like Chhattisgarh, which have the potential for ecotourism, can generate employment by investing little capital in its development. Besides inaugurating the Jungle Safari Park in Naya Raipur, he dedicated the BRTS developed under public transport service facility between the, Raipur and Naya Raipur. Foundation. Modi also dedicated the two-kilometer-long Ekatam Path uh, constructed between Naya Raipur railway station and capital complex. I have come here today. I have come here today. बड़े मन को प्रभाव पैदा करने वाली योजना से रचना हुई है निर्माण कार्य उत्तम हुआ है और आज नहीं जब पचास साल के बाद कोई छत्तीसगढ़ आएगा नया रायपुर देखेगा एकांत पथ देखेगा तो उसे लगेगा कि हिंदुस्तान का एक छोटा सा राज्य भी क्या समाज कर सकता है आदिवासी इलाका भी कैसी एक नई रौनक ला सकता है इसका संदेश भी आज एक प्रकार से शिलान्यास हुआ In more news now, with pollution levels in Delhi crossing the danger mark on Diwali, the centre on Tuesday summoned governments of five states over enforcing ban on stubble burning. The decision comes on a day the Central Pollution Control Board released its report on the air quality of Delhi. The Environment Ministry attributed the spike in pollution levels to open burning of solid waste, vehicular emissions, dust by the roadside, and stubble burning of crop residue in neighbouring states. Secretaries of Punjab, Delhi, Haryana, Rajasthan, and Uttar Pradesh have been summoned on the 4th of November to review the situation and to deliberate on the strategy to combat pollution. Delhi Deputy Chief Minister Manish Sisodia has also called a high-level meeting to ensure work at war footing and review the air pollution in Delhi. Haryana me ya Gazibad me, ane UP me, wah auto bahut khade hote hain. 400-500 auto khade rehte hain aur unme se 100-200 auto hamesha on rehte hain. Unka ignition on rehta hai. Unki wajah se border areas me bahut pollution hai. Aap kisi bhi aise entry point pe jaiye jahan Delhi me entry point hai, wah congestion safety measures ki to problem hai ye. इसकी भी प्रॉब्लम है तो चार तारीख को जो मीटिंग होने वाली है केंद्र सरकार के साथ में जो केंद्रीय पर्यावरण मंत्री ने बुलाई है उसमें हम इस चीज को रखेंगे कि स्टेट्स की ट्रांसपोर्ट अथॉरिटीज को कहें कि ये बॉर्डर्स को रेगुलेट करें वहां जो इलीगल तरीके से चल रहे ऑटो है उनको कंट्रोल करें ताकि वहां सौ दो ऑटो एक साथ इग्नाइट होकर इग्निशन ऑन करके नहीं खड़े रहे इतना पॉल्यूशन वहां पर फैल रहा है ये कुछ डिसीजन लिए हैं और इसमें हर हफ्ते इसका डिप्टी चीफ मिनिस्टर ऑफिस में रिव्यू होगा Now with banks, especially government-owned lenders, reeling under the pile of willful defaults, the Supreme Court has asked the RBI to disclose details of large corporate loan defaults. It has also warned that this concentration of risk, with a few large corporate borrowers holding on to a lion's share of bank debt, could be detrimental to the banking system. Here's a look. 
Crumbling under the weight of bad loans and willful defaults, the banking sector's risks have increased sharply. Lax credit risk appraisal and loan monitoring of inflated cost projections have only added to the pile of willful defaults. Project appraisal has to be happening on a very regular basis so that you know uh, you keep uh, understand the kind of risk that is going to be built up over a period of time in the project. Despite banks tightening their grip on small borrowers, corporate defaults are growing. Willful defaulters are entities or people who don't repay the loan despite having the ability to do so. Or they use the loan for a different purpose than for which it was given. The RBI has already submitted a list of big defaulters to the Supreme Court who failed to repay loans of over 500 crore rupees. It has pleaded that their names should not be made public because of confidentiality. The RBI also maintains that blanket disclosure of names is barred under the RBI Act and Credit Information Companies Regulation Act of 2005. They constitute about 85% of these NPAs, which is a very, very high figure. So what happened to this? What is the common man who takes a loan for the day of the day? It's only 15 to 16 percent of the NPA. But the big borrowers who are the big borrowers, they are the 84-85 percent of the NPA. The number of willful defaulters of public sector banks rose from 5,554 to 7,686 in three years in December 2015. The number involved more than doubled to 66,190 crore rupees from 27,749 crore rupees. 57 debtors alone defaulted on repaying around 85,000 crore rupees. State Bank of India tops the list with 11,705 crore rupees in willful defaults. The Supreme Court has to now decide if the names of the defaulters can be made public. Kriti Mishra for Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's take through some more national news updates in Nationwide. The price of subsidized LPG on Tuesday was hiked by over 2 rupees a cylinder, making it the sixth increase in rates in five months. The price of jet fuel was also raised by a steep 7.3% in step with global trends. A subsidized 14.2 kilogram cylinder will now cost 430 rupees 64 paise in Delhi. Prime Minister Narendra Modi launched Haryana's year-long Golden Jubilee celebrations from Gurugram. Modi will kick off Haryana's Swan Jayanti celebrations from Tao Devilal Stadium. The inaugural ceremony is expected to be attended by more than 100,000 people. Haryana was created on the 1st of November 1966 and completes 50 years on Tuesday. Kerala has become the third open defecation free state in the country. The announcement was made on the state's foundation day on Tuesday. Earlier, Himachal Pradesh and Sikkim had declared themselves open defecation free. Gujarat, Haryana and Uttarakhand will reportedly be announcing themselves as ODF soon. With a quick break here, we'll be back with the international news in a bit. Stay with us. Tales that inspire. Stories of social change. A salute to diversity. Promoting public discourse. Events that motivate. Inspiring the innovative spirit. Watch Rajya Sabha television documentaries. Welcome back. International news in Iraqi forces for the first time entered the eastern outskirts of Mosul as they attempt to drive Islamic State terrorists from their last stronghold. The forces are closing in from several fronts in an attempt to squeeze the terrorists. Iraqi Prime Minister Heather al-Badi warned Islamic State that they must surrender or die. 
Iraqi forces began their assault on Mosul city for the first time since launching a major offensive to retake the city from Islamic State terrorists. The Iraqi special forces, backed by coalition airstrikes, entered the eastern outskirts of Mosul on Tuesday. The forces liberated the town of Bazwaya from the control of the terrorists as they pushed closer to the center of the city. Uh, Troops also closed in from the north and the southeast while Shiite paramilitary groups pushed south of the city in an attempt to squeeze IS fighters from different directions. Iraqi Prime Minister Heather al Abadi on Monday pledged to close off all the escape routes for the terrorists, saying they will either die or surrender. نحاول نغلق على داعش من كل مكان وإن شاء الله نقطع رأس الأفعى أنا يعني أنبئ جميع المواطنين في نينوى وفي الموصل بالذات أنه سنقطع رأس داعش هؤلاء الأبطال سيقطعون رأس داعش سنحيط بهم من كل مكان ليس لهم مخرج ليس لهم مفر ما عليهم إلا الاستسلام As the fight intensified, the safety of civilians is expected to be under more risk the UN has repeatedly raised the concern of ISIS fighters abducting civilians and using them as human shield. Up to 1.5 million civilians were in Mosul before the fight began, and nearly 18,000 residents have fled so far, with as many as 700,000 others following suit. <laughs> ISIS also has sent more fighters to shore up its defences. The terrorists have also fired rockets and grenades at the marching army. With the forces advancing towards the centre of the last IS-held city, the battle is expected to go from street to street. Bureau Report, RSTV. Now in the US, and as the presidential polls draw near, Republican nominee Donald Trump pounced on Clinton's reignited email controversy, using the opportunity to hit out at her yet again. Announcement that the FBI is investigating more emails as part of probe into Clinton's use of a private email server has given new hope to Trump that he can perhaps make a comeback and win on the 8th of November. He has in fact already narrowed Clinton's lead in national opinion polls and is in fact leading in some battleground states where the election is likely to be decided. Hillary is the one who broke the law over and over and over again. We can be sure that what is in those emails is absolutely devastating. And I think we're going to find out, by the way, for the first time. Thank you, Uma. Thank you, Uma. Good job, Uma. Donald Trump reveling in fresh investigation of Hillary Clinton aides emails. With just a week left for the U.S. presidential poll, the Republican nominee jumped on the opportunity to claim victory, saying that newly found emails will be absolutely devastating to Clinton. At a rally in Michigan on Monday, Trump thanked Clinton aide Huma Abedin, whose husband Anthony Weiner is at the heart of an FBI's investigation that led to the discovery of new emails. This came after FBI Director James Comey disclosed on Friday that the Bureau was reviewing newly discovered emails for links to the Clinton server investigation. Hillary is the one who sent and received classified information on an insecure server, putting the safety of the American people under threat. That's what she did. Six hundred and fifty thousand. You know what I call that? That's the mother load. That's some, I think you're going to find the thirty-three thousand that are missing. Meanwhile, Hillary Clinton remained defiant about new emails, saying voters will not be swayed by the announcement. Clinton and her aides have fiercely objected to the timing of FBI Director Comey's action, now asking him to swiftly release more information about what is contained in the mails. Comey's revelation left many unanswered questions about the content of the emails and how they could be related to Clinton. It was a mistake and I regret it. And now they apparently want to look at emails of one of my staffers and by all means uh, they should look at them. And I am sure they will reach the same conclusion they did when they looked at my emails for the last year. There is no case here. 
Despite Hillary Clinton's insistence, FBI is unlikely to finish its review of new emails before the 8th of November election. It will be interesting to see what impact will the new emails have on voters, but the revelations have definitely steered the attention away from Donald Trump's scandal over alleged sexual misconduct accusations. Polls show the race for the White House has narrowed noticeably with Hillary just one point ahead of her Republican challenger, Trump, at 46 to 45 percent. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. And here are some more international news updates in Global Buzz. The Pentagon today warned of a terror threat from within Pakistan to the Pakistani people and outside. It also says more needs to be done to address the issue. The Pentagon has called counterterrorism a bit focused on the efforts in tackling the issue with Pakistan. At least 13 people are reported dead and around 20 missing after an explosion at a coal mine in China's Chongqing province. Chongqing's deputy mayor said that an all-out search for the missing miners is underway. However, authorities have already launched an investigation into the explosion and local officials have ordered the temporary shutdown of small coal mines in the region. Libyan forces said that they are trying to avoid harming civilians as they pushed on Monday to oust the last of the Islamic State fighters from their former stronghold of Sirt. Brigades led by fighters from the city of Misrata and backed by U.S. airstrikes appear close to recapturing the strategic city after a campaign lasting more than five months. According to a new report released by the UNICEF, nearly 220 million children of South Asia breathe toxic air in some of the most polluted regions in the world, including India, deepening worries over health of minors in several parts of the country. The UNICEF's Clear the Air for Children report, based on st satellite imagery, was released on Monday amid a sharp spike in air pollution in Delhi and other cities of North India after the Diwali festivities. And now let's get you all the updates from the world of sports. The Sports Ministry has asked the All India Tennis Association to elect a new president within 90 days. De-recognized by the Sports Ministry, Aita said that it was willing to elect a new president provided the government imposes its guidelines uniformly on all sports federations, including the IOA. Manchester City will take on Barcelona in the group game of the Champions League. City will thrash 4-0 at Camp Nou in the first leg. Barca, who have won all of the five of their meetings with City, need a point to guarantee a place in the last 16. Inter Milan have sacked coach Frank de Boer after Inter dropped to the 12th uh, in the standings, having lost four of the last uh, five league matches. Boer was in charge of the Serie A side for less than three months. Inter had finished 24 points behind Champions Juventus last season and failed to qualify for the Champions League for the fifth consecutive year. And that's all we have for you on the News at 6. Thanks for joining us.